Greetings, language enthusiasts. Today, we embark on a captivating odyssey through the vast realm of words, exploring their origins, meanings, and literary resonance. Word 1. Our journey begins with transmutation, drawn from Latin transmutari, meaning change. Picture life's unpredictable changes, akin to those faced by characters in Dickens' novels. Word 2. Eclipse, a word describing the act of making something unclear, traces its roots to Latin. It's the subtle eclipse of truth found in Orwell's 1984, a dystopian masterpiece. Orwell guides us through the maze of language, deciphering eclipses to find clarity amid the veils of ambiguity. Word 3. Sempaternal, a word that reminds us of life's enduring nature. It means unchanging, eternal and everlasting. Picture the eternal beauty captured in Frost's poetry, where moments transcend like the morning dew. Quote from the philosopher Chrysippus. Fate is a sempaternal and unchangeable series and chain of things rolling and unraveling itself through eternal sequences of cause and effect, of which it is composed and compounded. Word 4. Pernicious, the word signifies harmful intent. It resonates in the tragic plots of Shakespearean dramas, where pernicious ambitions lead to Hamlet's downfall. As we navigate the dramatic narratives of language, let us be vigilant against the pernicious whispers that may shape our linguistic tragedies. Word 5. Insidious, akin to pernicious, describes a subtle and harmful influence. Picture the insidious whispers in Austin's novels, where gossip corrodes reputations. In the social tapestry of language, let us recognize the insidious threads that weave through our conversations, influencing perceptions. Word 6. Nefarious, another dark adjective, evokes images of wickedness. It's the nefarious plots that unfold in the crime novels of Agatha Christie, where mysteries are unraveled. Just as detectives unveil nefarious schemes, let us unravel the mysteries of language, exposing the dark corners where words hide. Word 7. Let's now embrace panache, a term signifying distinctive and stylish flair. It finds its roots in the French language, resonating with the panache of d'Artagnan, and the musketeers in Dumas' swashbuckling tales. In our linguistic odyssey, let us embody panache, infusing our words with a bold and stylish flair, much like the musketeers of literature. Word 8. Sardonic, a term expressing mocking or cynical disdain, finds its origins in Greek. It's the sardonic wit of Wilde's characters, where humor conceals deeper societal critiques. As we appreciate the sardonic humor of language, let us recognize the subtle critiques that words can deliver with a sharp and humorous edge. Word 9. Let's navigate the linguistic quandaries with quandary, signifying a state of uncertainty or perplexity. This word stems from Latin, reflecting the quandaries faced by characters in the works of Jane Austen. In our linguistic journey, let us embrace the uncertainties that make language both challenging and rich in nuance. Phobias. Now, let's delve into the realm of fears, phobias that add depth to our emotional vocabulary. 1. Agrophobia, the fear of open spaces, mirrors the protagonist's confinement in a small apartment in Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar. Plath's depiction invites us to empathize with the agoraphobic struggle, expanding our understanding of the human psyche. 2. Claustrophobia, the fear of confined spaces, resonates in Poe's The Telltale Heart, where the narrator's guilt intensifies within a claustrophobic setting. Poe's mastery invokes the palpable feeling of claustrophobia, enhancing our appreciation for words that evoke visceral emotions. 3. Acrophobia, the fear of heights, manifests in the suspenseful scenes of Hitchcock's Vertigo, where the protagonist grapples with his acrophobic tendencies. Hitchcock's visual storytelling immerses us in the world of acrophobia, showing us how words and images can evoke shared fears. 4. 
xenophobia, the fear of strangers or foreigners, underscores the cultural tensions in Chinua Achebe's Things Fall Apart, as colonial forces introduce xenophobia into Igbo society. Achebe's narrative sheds light on the destructive impact of xenophobia, urging us to confront societal fears embedded in our language. 5. Nyctophobia, the fear of darkness, adds an eerie ambience to Lovecraft's cosmic horror tales, where the unknown lurks in the shadows, feeding on nyctophobic dread. Lovecraft's tales plunge us into the abyss of nyctophobia, showcasing the potency of words to evoke fear in the darkest corners of our imagination. Latin Medical Terms Now, let's journey into the world of Latin, where medical language finds its roots. 1. Anesthesia, from the Greek an, meaning without, and aesthesis, meaning sensation. Picture the revolutionary use of anesthesia in Morton's surgical procedures, transforming the landscape of medicine. Morton's pioneering work in anesthesia reshaped medical history, showcasing how Latin roots enrich our understanding of medical advancements. 2. Circadian, from the Latin circa, meaning around, and dm, meaning day. It describes the natural rhythm of physiological processes, as explored in the groundbreaking research of circadian rhythms. The exploration of circadian rhythms highlights the interconnectedness of nature and the human body, fostering a deeper appreciation for the Latin roots that underpin medical terminology. 3. Inflammation, from the Latin inflammare, meaning to set on fire. It encapsulates the body's intricate response to injury, reminiscent of the fiery imagery found in historical medical texts. In the pages of medical history, we witness the vivid metaphor of inflammation as a fiery battleground within the body, where healing takes place. 4. Morbidity, from the Latin morbidus, meaning diseased. It delves into the statistical study of diseases and health-related conditions, embodying the essence of medical surveillance. The concept of morbidity reflects the meticulous observation of health trends, emphasizing the importance of Latin in precision and clarity within medical discourse. 5. Pathology, from the Greek pathos, meaning suffering, and logos, meaning study. It encapsulates the study of diseases, a field where pioneers like Rudolf Fierko paved the way. Virchow's contributions to pathology exemplify the intersection of language and medical discovery, underscoring the power of words in shaping the understanding of diseases. Concluding Quotes As we conclude our linguistic odyssey, let me leave you with inspiring quotes from classical authors that encapsulate the timeless wisdom of words. The only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. Socrates it is not that I'm so smart. But I stay with the questions much longer. Albert Einstein. The purpose of our lives is to be happy. Dalai Lama. Do not wait for leaders, do it alone, person to person. Mother Teresa. To love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance. Oscar Wilde. Words, like the ones we've explored today, carry the weight of history, the richness of human experience, and the power to shape our understanding of the world. May your linguistic journey be filled with curiosity and the joy of discovery. Until our next exploration, happy learning.